Hello Hemo friends and welcome to this new video. Today we are going to talk about footwork. Be it about life or fencing, while talking about every subject, there are some concepts which are easy to learn and uh, relatively simple, but are overlooked because they are considered obvious. Today I want to explore four of these subjects which are taken for granted while talking about footwork, which are in fact extremely important and that can have a great impact on your fencing. Before going through these four points, I want to point you toward a video which is extremely important while talking about the subjects I am going to explore right now, which is a video I made about stunts. You can find it here. The first subject I want to explore is in fact the most important one and it is the difference between the passing step and the step or fencing step as you prefer in terms of distance breached but also by the fact that one is a modular kind of step and the other one has a fixed distance that can breach which can vary in a minimal way. Now, while talking about the step which has a fixed distance to reach, of course, I am talking about the passing step. Now, depending from our stance, it can be higher or lower, we have an ideal passing step. We simply feel it while doing it. There is an ideal distance to reach. Too much is too much and we feel it actually, and uh, shorter is even more weird. So it is possible, of course, to land a giant passing step by moving forward, but it's different and we are going to talk about it later because it's time to become running, fun enough. Now, instead, when, the, when we want to land a passing step, we have this ideal distance to bridge, as I mentioned, which is hard to vary. When we want to move lesser, which is pretty important in fencing sometimes, we can't rely easily on this kind of step. And so, Using only passing steps in our footwork is uh, kind of detrimental because it makes us subject to actions exploiting that kind of tempo, which is kind of big, because the distance breached by our step is quite a lot. Instead, our step or fancy step or aggressor, as you want to call it, can be varied in a dramatic way in terms of distance breached. You can step by 1 cm, 10 cm, 20, 30, depending from the goal that you want to achieve. If you want to approach the opponent in a, let's say, sneaky way, it is better to step with a lot of tiny steps instead of doing a giant one. If you are using instead your passing step is even worse than doing a giant step, simply because you are bridging a lot of distance, but also you are moving your shoulders a lot, which makes easier to see by the opponent. So, in short, when you are approaching your opponent, try to not dance a lot in and out of distance with your passing step, because it is extremely dangerous. Now, the second point is that the passing step can indeed be varied in terms of distance breached, but at some costs. So, to do it, you have to move sideways, because as I mentioned before, the distance, the ideal distance that you want to breach is fixed. So, to modify the distance from you and the opponent, breached with a passing step, you simply have to uh, do a passing step with not only moves forward, but also moves sideways by an extent. Now, sometimes it is useful to move sideways, depending from the technique you want to land. But other times, if you have to step sideways because you want to modify the distance breached by your passing step, and your technique ideally don't need to move sideways, it is better to use a different combination of steps. So again, long story short, you can modify your passing step by moving sideways, and this breaches lesser distance, but you have to consider it carefully depending from the technique you want to land. Now the third point I wanted to explore is that when you're trying to land a passing step really, really fast forward, depending from what you want to do, of course, and from your stance and from your speed, it transforms into basically running or jumping. Now, generally speaking, these kind of motions can be described with flash or flange or whatever, depending from the action that you are going to land in the end, but are considered in a relatively bad way by certain parts of the HEMA community, but funny enough are just the natural 
um, way in which humans move forward really, really fast. We can't actually move forward with passing steps faster than a certain amount of speed. The only way in which we can step forward relatively fast without running is race walking and it is not a very good way to approach fighting actually. So when we are trying to move fast with passing steps it's fine to actually start running or jumping again depending from what you want to do, which action you want to land and sometimes even what it feels more comfortable to do. So avoid trying to land single passive steps really really fast because it's a dead end basically. You can't um, try to go against the nature of the human body which at a certain point just wants to run. <laughs> so the fourth point I wanted to explore is that a stance which has the feet too wide, so too apart from each other, or actually even too long, so a too extended uh, stance position, is a problem. Now, when you are the feet far apart from each other, it is actually, fun enough, easier to move sideways, but it is harder to move forward. And generally speaking, in fencing, you want to move forward and backward easily, and you have to do it quite a lot. Now, instead, when you have your uh, stance which is too extended, which is generally speaking the error which I do, it is harder to move forward and backward, not because of your position itself, which is okay, but because if your stance is too extended, you actually have lesser space to step, because in a certain sense you have already stepped partially. You don't have enough room your legs are not long enough to step even more forward. So these two kind of situations are relatively a problem. If you do it on purpose, it's fine, because if you have a motivation to do it, it's okay, if it is part of your plan. But generally speaking, if it's a habit, if you uh, find yourself doing it because it feels normal, it's something that you do usually, Actually, it is better to try and correct this kind of thing because it may be that it is stopping you from achieving your desired movements when you are fencing. So long story short, if your feet are too far apart from each other when you are in your fighting stance or are too extended, it may be a problem. Try just to find a sweet spot between these two things which makes it easier for you to move forward and backward, especially, and sideways if you need. Very good people, I hope you will find this video useful in some ways. Thanks for watching as always. Remember to check my Patreon page link in the description if you want to support me and the channel, and if you want to see more of my content. Thanks for watching as always, and uh, see you next time.